Okay, this next, this next form, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to throw a cylinder and, and I'm going to expand this form just a little bit, you know, somewhat like a little, uh, like a base, the, the size of a baseball. And um, I'm trying to get the, the fullness of this round, you know, the round form to make sure, it, make sure it's, it's, it's as bulbous as it gets. Uh, I have to center it just a little bit more. Sometimes I, I almost don't fully center my pots because I can correct it while I'm bringing it up. Okay, I'm going to throw a cylinder here and then close it in as I pull the, the clay up. So when I pull the clay out, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to squeeze and I'm lifting the clay up. So from here, I'm going to squeeze and then just lift the clay up. And the clay comes right up. And then once I get it up this way, then I'll lift up some more clay and at the same time, I'm, I'm expanding the form. And then once I have this, these shapes roughly out, roughed out, this is when I start using my, my push sticks. These are actually called push sticks. And just go in there and just gently, ever so gently, push the, the belly out as full as I, as I like for it to be. And then close the thing back in. Go back in here and push the belly out just a little bit more, just to get it as full. Looks pretty full now. So, and then just trim off all these little edges here. And then close the form back up. And then clean clean up some of the bottoms to redefine that shape. It's a good time to take the clay off right now so that I have less to trim later on. I still I think I can still get it a little bit fuller. So this is when I really go back and redefine this the shape. This part here the belly is really really important. It kind of really really uh, defines that, that fullness, that bulbousness of the whole thing. So if I can get it just full, and a lot, a lot of times that's exactly what I'm after. Okay, this is, this is the one I like. I really like this piece now. Clean up some of the lines. It. Okay, this next form, this next piece that I'm going to throw, that I call my kinky series, uh, that's thrown in several different parts, and, and uh, I'll throw a ring, and then I'll use the special uh, curly wire to run to create patterns out of them. To create patterns out of the body, you know, in, in Push the clay all the way through to, to, to the floor here, and then stretch the clay out just enough. Clean it up here. And since I don't really measure my clay, I know that I've got too much clay here, so I just cut them off. And I don't need that much clay to make this little thing here. It. So once I have this here, the key now is to get that going and dry just enough again, just a little bit, so when I pick it up I won't distort the outside surface. Just 
pick it up, just gently lift the thing off. On the bat. There you go. Now I'll make the uh, the two the bodies on both sides of these pieces. In order to make the bodies on these things, um, all I'm going to do is just throw a flat sort of pancake and then run these wires through that I use, you know, to make them. It's sort of a they're, they're curled in different patterns this way and there, and some around, you know, round this way. What I use is I use uh, piano wires, and because it has great tensile strength, I wrap the, the, the piano wire around a, um, a small nail, one of those finishing nails. And then once it's done, I wrap it, and I'll just stretch it a little bit. And, and, it, and it becomes this, this way. And it's kind of springy, and it still holds it, its shape, so it does, doesn't lose that, that uh, the, the shape. Not like a, just like if you use a regular wire, you, you, you almost can't stretch it. So piano wire is the key. You just go to any piano store, and uh, you can buy them by the foot, you know, or, or the yard. And they're not very expensive. Oops. What I'll do is I'll spread this clay out just enough. And then get it compressed. And I use, and I bring this thing back here to check. And that's essentially all I need right there. So I can really just slice this off. I don't really need all these, so I just cut them away. Once I have this thing roughly shaped out, now I use this wire here and run it through. Give it a shake, run it back. This is slip that I've mixed up. Um, what it is is, is um, this is pretty good stuff. This um, has got paper pulp in there. Um, I went to a clay conference and uh, Rosette Galt, the, the lady, she, she uh, introduced actually paper clay. Uh, she was using it to make stuff with paper clay, but I don't use it to make stuff. I only use it as a slip because uh, the pulp in there has this great bonding property that just, you know, because these porcelain is so smooth, if you don't assemble it properly, it'll just peel away. And sometimes it does that, but, for the, but this has, has increased, you know, my, my bonding uh, percentage, you know, incredibly, incredibly, uh, you know, h higher. I used to not be able to, to, to get it. Uh, I used to be, you know, have a hard time until I discovered paper slip. It stinks, uh, you know, when 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 you use it, uh, but it's pretty good stuff. What I do is I just mix, get some paper, smash it, and just throw it in there, you know. And and uh, the reason it smells is because the paper is decomposing. Uh, but other than that, if, if you can put up with the smell, it's great stuff. Once I have it, I just that's all you do. And then I seal the edges in here. and on the outside and um, usually once it gets stiff then I'll, I'll cut it up but now I'll just pull this thing out so you can see the, uh, the pattern here. This is, what, this is what the body looks like once it's been sliced off. You know. So, And I almost don't touch this side. What I do is I just dry this thing off again. It's important to dry this surface here because Right now, this is incredibly, incredibly soft, and, and you, if you try to touch it, you'll distort that beautiful surface here. And once it's stiffened up, then I'll just slice off all, all the rough edges here. And, 
this is how I can actually pick it up, you know. And then, um, and then I'll, I'll when this is really kind of stiff, once it's stiff, I can flip it back up and then just slice off all these edges and, and get rid of that corner. And then uh, I'll do the other side too. And when I usually when I do the other side, I'll I'll pick it up and lay it down here so that I can once it's stiffen up, I'll, I'll reassemble it back up. Okay, I'm gonna finish finish the other side of the um, this kinky series. Like I said, once again, the um, the centering takes you know the most time. The other the whole other process doesn't take much time to finish up. pick it up so you can see it. Right here. Uh, next, I'm going to be throwing my spouts, my T-bolts, and my uh, lids. And what I'm going to do is I'm, I'll be throwing these things off the hump. You know, it just offers, the hump offers me just a easier, a quicker way, you know, uh, to throw these things a little bit faster, a little bit, you know, quicker, and a lot more convenient because I can raise, I can, I can center just enough clay just to throw my certain parts of it, and um, and then from there, you know, th then I can just throw my the the required pieces that I need to, re you know. First, I'll throw my my lid. And here, I'll just center just enough clay here, just to get just to get my lid. And so here, all I do is just press down and then just squeeze and lift. Thing. It's thrown upside down, by the way. And this is just the beginnings of of the lid, and then I'll have this tool here. It's been kind of, you know, worn off from, from the years of throwing it and then just gently create that lid, the upside down part of the lid, and then get up here and push the clay up. And I'll use this cut off tool here just to slice it off and then just pick it up. And there's my lid this way. And I'm not too concerned about the, the, the distortion here because uh, once it gets stiff, I'll just, uh, you know, kind of put it back into shape. And here next, I'll, I'll, I'll actually throw a couple more rather quickly so that I can get into the, the rhythm here, you know, because it's all about, uh, in, in some ways, rhythm throwing here. Um, once you get, whenever I throw these pots, I, I'll, I'll throw a, a bunch of bodies, a bunch of lids, a bunch of spouts, and then I'll find one, I'll find them that fit. And I, I never measure my, my openings because um, from experience, I can just look at my, my form and, and uh, you know, roughly I can tell how, how wide they are. My, um, my spouts. Sort of the same way, I center just enough clay here, get this homemade throwing stick here with a little ball and then just squeeze it and just lift the clay up ever so gently. Oops, there's a piece of dirt on it. And now redefine this curve here, which is very, very crucial and very, very important in, in making a spout. Right here, this curve here. Because um, when I set it back onto the, the body of the pot, it will um, determine you know, the ultimate shape. And then once I have it sliced off. OK, now I'll throw my T-bowls. They're, throw, they're thrown essentially the same way. Just go in there, push in there, squeeze, and lift the clay up. And this is your basic cylinder here, and then go, I'll go in with this, with this tool here, and then just very gently redefine that shape. And 
And then I'll use my cutoff tool and just slowly just slice it off. And there it is. Rather than try to, um, you know, shape, um, measure them as I'm making them, I just make a bunch. Um, I've, I've found that from experience it's a lot faster to do it this way than it is to uh, try to go and, 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 and create, you know, each piece. I'll try to go match up each piece while, while I'm throwing them. I guess I'm just not a big, big uh, proponent of uh, things matching. As long as they're, the T-bolts, you know, they're fine. As long as they're roughly the shape. And then I'll just go back and clean it up and make sure it fits. Okay. This next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this, this part here. And in order to trim this part, to redefine the foot, I'm going to create, try to create a foot here. And a nice, small, narrow foot. I have to use this chuck, and I have to, I have to you know, make a chuck to fit this thing here. So uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. Usually I just center just the top, just so that I can keep it centered, and, and then from here just create an opening here just so that it'll it'll fit into the shoulder of that pot and um, and then I clean it up and once again before I do anything I of, of course just dry the surface up just just to stiffen it up if I get the surface just stiff enough, it'll, it'll, it'll nicely, you know, sit in there, and then um, it won't. The soft clay won't stick to the shoulders, and if it does, I just wipe it off. So this this heat gun comes in very, very handy for for a lot of these things because um, because if if, um, if it wasn't for that, I I have to sit and wait for a long time. So I got this thing stiffened up. So now I just set it back in here and just recenter it back onto the, uh, the thing. It's actually pretty centered now. There, and just tap it in there. Once I have it centered, um, usually to prevent it from um, kind of sometimes just getting off the hump, I just kind of hold it, just pivot right in the middle there and just take away the clay now. There you go. So if it does that, I just have to watch it and just put it back in there. There you Once I have the most of the clay taken off, now I go back in, go back in with this rib and clean off just all this little This is going really well. It's kind of cool. Sometimes it takes me a while to get you to get the, the shape. This one, it's just right. Take that little foot out. And 
And because this clay is soft, and in order for me to pick this thing up, once again, the heat gun comes in very, very handy. Because this, this, is, this is so soft that if I flip it and just set, set it back down, it'll, uh, it'll um, just collapse. So this, this, you know, clay when stiff, you know, it's a lot easier to handle. And it'll hold its own weight. So once I have it just sort of... It feels like it's stiff now. It looks like a nice crack there. Take care of that. Okay, and I just pick it back up. And there's the shape. 